Hey, this is Camille from Nuts and Bolts Speed Training, and this is a short tutorial for two ways to add a watermark or a confidential stamp in your PowerPoint presentations. And I'm not just going to show you different ways to add a watermark to your presentation, I'm also going to show you a few troubleshooting tips to make sure that they appear properly when and how you want them. And the first thing that you need to do before you even think about putting a stamp in your presentation is you need to ask yourself a couple key questions. And the first question you want to always ask yourself is, do I want this stamp to appear on every single slide? in my presentation or just on one or a few. That will determine where exactly you place it. And the second question you want to ask yourself is, do I want to be able to edit the stamp down the road, make changes to it without having to start all over from scratch? So let's go ahead and start adding our stamp to our PowerPoint presentation and I will answer each one of these questions as we go along and show you the different ways to approach it. So here in PowerPoint, I have a presentation here that I want to add a uh, watermark to in the background that is behind all of my content. And to do that, we need to go into the Slide Master. There are a couple ways to go into the Slide Master, and we show you some of the hidden shortcuts for how to do that in our video that you can see here up on the screen. Uh, so check that out if you want to see how to do that. Otherwise, the normal way to get to the Slide Master is to go to the View tab, click on the View tab, select Slide Master, You'll jump right into the Slide Master area here and you'll know that you are there by the Slide Master tab here that's open. Uh, now the question that we first asked ourselves, do we want this stamp to appear on all slides or on just a few or one slide, will determine where exactly we go once we're in the Slide Master view. So if you want your stamp to appear only on one particular slide, then you need to just make sure that you're down here in one of the child layouts rather than the parent layout, which is the very top one. So if you know that you want to have your stamp, for example, appear only on this type of content slide, then just stay here, stay exactly here with this uh, selected. Otherwise, you can click through and select, go to the exact place that you want to be in. If you want to have the stamp appear on multiple slides, you'll have to do this again for each one of these slide layouts. Now, if you want your stamp to appear on every single one of your slides, I highly recommend that you come up here to the parent slide because that will dictate what appears on all of your slides and you only have to worry about it in one single location rather than multiple. Okay, so once you know that you're in the right place, you can start adding your watermark or your stamp. And there are two ways to do this. You can do this by adding text or by adding an image, and I'll show you how to do both. Let's start with text. So to add text to your slide, you will go up to the insert tab, select text box, and just drag it in. Okay, I'm going to type in the word uh, draft. And then I'm going to make this uh, larger size. Let's see what 36 looks like. Uh, maybe I'll make it a bit bigger, 46. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to center it, so control E to center the text to the middle. Then I'm going to change the color of the text. I'm going to make it a lighter gray. I want to make sure that it's not too stark so I can still see the content in the slide. So maybe I'll choose this color. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to orient this to the side. And let's just say actually that for this one, we'll make it a lot bigger. So I'm just going to grow this text. We'll just assume that we're going to have one word here as our stamp. Drag it and place it roughly here. You can align it with your alignment tools if you like. Now the last step to make sure that you do is to send this to the back. So we want it to be behind the two placeholders here. So I'm going to go to the arrange tool and select send to back. Send it back here, we'll make it go all the way to the back. Now, because we have a, um, a background shape here, we need to actually send this one also to the back so it goes even further behind. So send to back, and there you have it layered perfectly. Okay, so that's how to add text to your presentation as a watermark. And to do the same thing with a picture, let me just go ahead and delete this draft text. Um, you can paste in any picture that you like. I actually want to have my logo as the, as the watermark here, so I'm going to copy and paste it in so I get a duplicate of it. I'm going to grow it, make it very large, place it around here. Then I'm going to angle it about this like so. And then I'm actually going to change the coloring of this image uh, directly from the Picture Tools Format tab, select Color, and I'm going to pick this Wash Out effect so it kind of fades in. You can also choose, I like this, uh, this one here, the light gray background two color light. Um, and the same thing that we're gonna, we did before, we're gonna do again, we're gonna send it to the back, but this time a faster way is to also select the slide background and send to back. And together they'll go all the way to the back. Let's do that again, send to back. 
So now you have your two placeholders that are sitting above your background and your watermark. And now if we go into the normal view, we close out of the slide master view, you'll see that the logo is behind every one of these slides and you'll see that it is correctly placed behind the content. So remember our first question was, do we want this, uh, do we want the watermark to appear on every single slide or just a few? We've already answered that. The next question was, do we want this uh, stamp or watermark to be editable? So if I go back to the slide master view, you'll notice that um, this stamp along with the text that we had placed earlier is still selectable here and you can make continue to make edits to it. You could change the color, you could do anything you want to it. So it's still editable. What if you actually don't want a customer or a client or a user of this template to be able to edit the stamp or the watermark? Or you wanna make sure that nobody accidentally moves it because that always happens in some situations. So there is a way to do that and let me show you. And the way to do that is to actually place the stamp or the background image um, as a slide background. So to do that, we're going to right click and select format background. And you can do this, by the way, also in one of these parent layouts, if you only uh, child layouts, if you only want it to appear on certain slides. Um, you'll notice here that currently the background is just a solid fill. It's just white. Um, what we're going to want to have is to have the um, the stamp as the as the background. So there are a couple ways to do this. One of the ways to do this is to select all of the content that you want to have appear on the slide background and copy it to your clipboard. Let me show you exactly how that looks. In my situation, I have two elements here that I'd like to keep in the background. So I'm going to select my watermark and holding shift, I'm also going to select these two background elements. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Control C to copy them. I copy them now, they're on my clipboard. If I go to Format Background and change the background from Solid Fill to Picture or Texture Fill, I get the option here to select Clipboard. I'm gonna select Clipboard. It doesn't look like anything has changed, but if I zoom out here really quickly, select my watermark and my background elements and move them off to the side, you'll notice that they have been pasted in and they are now technically the um, background of my slide and I cannot edit them. I cannot click on anything that's here in the background, which makes it great if you want to make sure that nobody can change anything about um, something like a confidential stamp or a, a logo that's on the background of your slide. Now you can go back into your background and change it to a different look, but you can't actually edit it now that it's here in the um, background. Now you can do this with a text, the same thing applies. Um, one thing to note, if you don't have a background element like I did that you selected along with everything, what I recommend doing, because let me show you what happens if you only select uh, select your logo, I'm hit Control C to copy my logo, I'm going to format the background, select clipboard, you'll notice that the entire logo, this image here, is stretched to fit the, fit the entire slide and you get no background color, which is um, possibly not what you want to have. So what I would recommend doing is to uh, insert a rectangle, have it be the size of the entire slide, uh, make sure that 7.5 by 13.33 if you're in 16 by 9 format, then format it however you like, maybe you want it to be white, uh, and then drag your logo on top of it to make sure it's on top. We need to uh, bring it to the front. And then I'm going to position it however I like, select them both, hit Control C to copy, go back to format your background, clipboard. And now if I move these off to the side, it should be positioned correctly. So there you have it. Those are, um, that's one way to using the clipboard, paste in your watermark into the slide background so that it's not editable. Now, another way to do that is to actually save, uh, save your watermark as an image. So let me show you really quickly how to do that as well. So you can um, select everything you wanna have in your watermark. In this case, I wanna have the background element and my logo. So I will select all three elements. Then I will right click them and select save as picture. Um, and then you can rename it to whatever you like. Let's just call it watermark for now. Hit save. And then when you go to format your slide background, instead of choosing clipboard, you can choose file and then go and find your image, this case watermark, insert, and it will be pasted in as a slide background. It works exactly the same way as a clipboard. Uh, you can't edit it or do anything different to it. However, it does mean that you have a copy of it saved on your computer somewhere that you could potentially edit uh, down the road. Now you may also be asking yourself, well, what if I want this logo to appear uh, more than just once? Or what if I have, uh, let's just say I have some draft text that I want to have appear uh, multiple times throughout this slide instead of just one time. 
Well, let me show you how I would go about doing that. Um, the first thing I would do is I would make all these edits and you can do it two ways. You can either do it manually yourself. Uh, let me just shorten this by duplicating control D and then placing placing multiple versions of the text or of the logo onto your slide. Whoops. Uh, and you can do this all manually and then go through the processes that I just walked you through. Another way to do it is actually to use the slide background options that we have tile, uh, tile as pattern. So what you can do is actually um, let's make uh, an image. So I'm going to resize this. Uh, I'm going to position this as such and resize this rectangle here. And let me just make sure that um, the text fits in perfectly. So I'm going to zoom in, make sure that there is no edge. I'm going to align these, align to center and align to middle. Now that this is all perfectly uh, positioned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both, hit control C on my keyboard to copy them. Then I'm going to format the background. Let me actually zoom out so that we see it properly. Now that it's copied onto my clipboard, if I format the slide background to clipboard, you'll notice that this draft gets pasted in. Um, that's not exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this little option here that says tile picture as texture. And then this image is actually going to be duplicated multiple times um, throughout the presentation. And you can actually adjust the offsets here if you want to make them a bit smaller. So maybe you actually want to make them 50%. Make sure you do it to both so it doesn't warp 50% that actually makes it smaller. You'll notice there is a little bit of a uh, gap between these. So um, feel free to play around with those with the sizing of your rectangle or with the offsets. I'm just going to control Z to undo that. So it goes back to 100%. It's not control Z. Let's just do it manually 100%. And that's exactly the size um, that you created the image of duplicated across your slide and you can obviously do the same thing with uh, with your image if you now go back to the normal view you'll notice that your slide uh, we've got all this that we've added so we can delete this uh, back in the in the back in the slide master view but you'll notice that your slide um, has the draft in the background duplicated uh, across and you cannot make any edits to it now the last thing to point out here if you go through all of these slides you may notice that one slide, such as this one, doesn't actually have your watermark appearing on it, even though you place the watermark on the parent slide in your slide master. Uh, it looks like it's going across all of them, except, oh, and this one is also not uh, displaying it. So this might happen to you. And, and one thing to keep in mind is, uh, is your, the way that your template and your slide masters are set up. So if I go to the view tab, select slide master, you'll notice that this layout actually is, uh, is different. Uh, these two, both of them are different from the one set up here in the parent slide. And that is because um, this slide, these both of them have this little feature here that's been selected that is hide background graphics. So if I uncheck this, you'll notice if I move this that the tra draft um, text appears again. So let me hit control Z to undo. So this is uh, a feature that you want to keep in mind that, that may happen. The, both of these slides have this selected and the reason that it has this selected is that it you want the, this layout to look different. You don't want it to have the footers and the logo perhaps. So that means that anything you put here in the background uh, will actually be null and voided on this slide. So that's just something to keep in mind for those slides and why um, your watermark may not appear. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, when you're here back in the normal view, you can always override your watermark by changing the background, uh, the slide background again. So for example, in this situation, if I format the background for this particular slide. Um, currently it's set to what I, you know, what I said on the slide master, but you can actually just go back to a solid fill and it won't affect the slide master and it won't affect any of the other slides in your presentation. And that's just one of the few ways that things that you edit in your slide master can affect the things in the normal view. And uh, if you need troubleshooting help with having your slide numbers appear properly, even if you've been using PowerPoint for decades, there are some funky little features that happen and uh, commands that are selected that affect how your slide numbers appear. Check out this video here on how to troubleshoot all of your slide numbers in PowerPoint.
So that was two ways to add a watermark or a confidential stamp uh, to your PowerPoint presentations. And if you want to learn more about how to create custom PowerPoint themes and custom PowerPoint templates, check out my playlist here on YouTube where I talk about the exact steps that I take to build a custom PowerPoint template from scratch. If you found this video helpful or if you have any questions about what I covered or any questions about PowerPoint whatsoever, please type them into the discussion area down below and we will answer any questions that you have. If you thought this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up down below and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you you can hear about the latest tips and tricks that we share about PowerPoint. Thanks so much for watching. This is Camille with Nuts and Bolts Speed Training, and I will see you at happy hour.